It was 170 feet long, 51 and a half feet at its beam, and it was a menacing looking boat. Okay, this is a scale model of the USS Crown Lapis, half inch to the foot. Uh, what you see on the top is the hurricane deck, then you have the gun deck, and then you have the coal deck, which was down uh, in the lower part of the boat itself. Uh, you have the air vents that came up on each side. You have the uh, paddle wheel house. Pilots were very vulnerable. They were the prize. They were the things that the Confederate snipers were looking at. The uh, pilot houses were then ironclad to protect the uh, pilots from as much rifle shot as possible. The gun deck uh, consisted of areas that, of course, was for the armament. In this area here, there was a cook stove and the, also the uh, cruise area where they uh, have their hammocks and where they uh, slept at. There are three versions of guns on here. They're 42 pounders, 32 pounders, and an eight inch uh, smoothbore gun. The construction of the hull of the ship, you can see here, was the, uh, the large bents and beams that went across. The uh, storage of the gunpowder were next to the, the uh, cannons, as you can see in each one of the places. The first four boats uh, to be launched uh, were the Carondelet, uh, followed by the St. Louis, uh, the Louisville, and the Pittsburgh, the so-called city class uh, of boats. All of these boats were launched at Carondelet uh, with a good deal of ceremony. They then made their way to Cairo, which is where uh, Ulysses Grant had his headquarters, uh, where they would be outfitted uh, with cannon uh, and with other, uh, other accoutrements, uh, and they would be available to Grant in the spring of 1862 for his strategic assault on Forts Donaldson and Henry on the Cumberland and Tennessee Rivers. Pook, Rogers, Foote, and especially James B. Eads defied conventional wisdom and built the first ironclad boats right here in St. Louis and started the concept of today's modern Navy.